And we're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. Let's head to your first major conversation as we have our guests join us this morning. Ola Bade Shoumi. Well, the outgoing president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, Mr. Yuba Waba, said Nigerians have been pushed to the wall by current scarcity of Naira notes and uh, petrol scarcity across the country warning that the situation should be addressed and must be within the shortest possible time. He, however, said that the organized labor is pushing for an end to importation of petrol, petroleum products into the country rather than the reduction in the prices. According to him, rather than seek a reduction in prices of fuel, labor will seek policy change. In his words, the policy of importation was imposed on Nigerians in 2003 by the International Monetary Fund, IMF. And that is why the price model of product is based on importation. Well, joining us to discuss Nigeria's fuel importation model and the current scarcity of products being experienced in almost all parts of the country's leading producer of oil is our guest, Olubade Shoumi, an oil expert uh, from the FCT. Olubade, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Right then. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so how would you react and respond to, you know, the thoughts and the position of the labor union? Well, the, the labor union has put on in terms of what they assert and what they will seek to achieve. The issue is how will they go about it and uh, how do they expect government to go about it in practical ways. There's nothing wrong in having high and lofty goals. I mean, that's the nature of man. But the issue is where the rubber touches the road, where the practicalities of this things come in. Um, yes, uh, the ideal thing is that we produce. I mean, it's interesting to note the perspective of um, the IMF in bringing us into this environment. Uh, but having said that, what is first of all important is that there is energy, which in this case is fuel, available for uh, daily use. And how can that daily uh, that availability of energy for daily use be substantiated? So I think that's where the issue really is. It's not in the aspiration. It's not in the in the desire to ensure that uh, fuel importation policy is stopped. So, but I, I'd like you to also look at uh, the importation model that we currently are practicing, okay? Uh, and juxtaposing that, that we have what it takes to uh, refine our own products. Do you think that is rational that we have, over the years, continued to import uh, this product as against refining it, which would actually do us a lot of economic good? Well, I mean, definitely, that, that's just plain logic. It's always better for us to, to I mean, to refine it. But however, I mean, it's, it's just a reality. There are many things that are not working within the Nigerian system. It's not peculiar to the oil and gas industry. It's virtually everywhere. Uh, there are some things that are almost like um, you hitting the self-destruct button, whether it be in the pharmaceutical or the health industry, whether it be in the media, whether it be in the energy industry, it's 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 a Nigerian challenge. So yes, that ought not to have been the situation over this amount of time, but unfortunately, that is the reality. So from my own view, and I think that is also should be the view of positive thinking, is that having found ourselves in this situation, rather than looking back and pointing fingers, the question should be, how should we move forward? How should we get to the land or the place where we want to be without necessarily disrupting normal life? I think that should be the question uh, to, to my mind on this matter. No, so, but I, I don't think that, you know, we should just let this slide. For how long will we continue as a country mounting, uh, you, ensuring that our primaries? I mean, if you look at all of the excuses that we constantly give and that, that uh, the NLC had given as well, is that the refinery is not functioning, right? So we have refineries that are not, you know, in the state of producing what they should produce or not even producing in most cases. 
And so we have always said, yes, we should be able to have uh, the capacity as a country to refine our products. If you look at how long we have been uh, exploring you know, oil and exporting it as a raw material, are we not ripe for saying we should be able to have our own capacity, we should be able to have refineries where we say, yes, we can still refine this product without having to be very dependent on you know, the finished products from outside of the country. So do you think that what is actually hampering this, apart from, I mean, what is hampering our refineries not functioning apart from corruption is that there might also be an external influence from the IMF and the World Bank. Well, well you see, in, in logic, in, in logic, there's something that's called fallacy of institutionalization, generalization. And that, of course, when you come to a conclusion without having representative sample of the facts, there are a number of reasons why the refinery may not be working. And it's, um, it's simplistic to just say it's corruption, just like there are many reasons why agencies of government may not be working. It's simplistic to just say it's corruption. I mean, there are many reasons why the Nigerian society is not where it is. It's simplistic to just say it's poverty. Now, the point there is this. First and foremost, there is capacity to refine. So the issue is not about capacity. We have been refining for more than 40 years. So the issue is not capacity. The issue, as to speak, in terms of facts, is the fact that the refineries are not working. Now, why are the refineries not working? It's very easy to sit here and point fingers and say it's corruption. I mean, that's the easy way. And at least that way, we are able to shed off the responsibility of saying that we don't really know what is happening. Let us investigate what is happening. Let us question what is happening so that we come to the facts. If we do not know what is happening, we will assume. And when we assume, we will come to wrong conclusions. And it will be a case of two wrongs, which will never make you right. It is not my place to say this is the details of what is wrong. It is my place to analyze the facts that are on ground. The facts that are on ground is the refineries are not working. Why they may not be working is a whole different ballgame. But the point that I am making is that rather than spending time on issues that do not bring results, which is looking into the past, looking for who to blame, looking for who to hang, I believe that positive energy should be spent on how do we resolve the issues going forward. It is possible that in the process of resolving the issues going forward, we may need to look into the past, we may need to address some things, in which case looking into the past will be a positive thing. And looking into the past can now resolve to us moving forward. But looking into the past cannot be the goal. It is looking forward. That should be the goal. And that's why I believe that everybody should focus on. That is my own thinking, but I'm, I'm sure everybody don't have to agree with that. No, so I mean, the reason why we have some of this conversation is not because we want to have that. We exist for a certain purpose. And that's because we have to speak constantly, you know, uh, proper solution. We probably might not have access to the... Uh, I mean, what's it called again? Have access to the president directly. But, you know, this is a medium where you as an expert can actually put out all of that, uh, you know, uh, solution. So if you say that our refineries are not working because we don't lack capacity, it's not because of capacity, because we have been producing, and that's something to go by. Now, why are refineries not functioning? Is it something that we can fix? I'd like you to share your thoughts on that. Well... I can guess, I can assume, but if we are going to get to the facts of why the refineries are not working, it's not even the president that can help. It is the people at the refineries. It is the person who has the primary number one responsibility for those refineries, the MD of the refineries, the MD of NNPC. They are able to speak to the issues. And because these are, should we say, government agencies or are now private organizations, you can't just have access to their information or have access to their operation without them telling you. Even the IOCs, even people can't just have access to their operations. So because they also serve a public good, it is incumbent upon you to also talk to them, for them to speak to the details of why the refineries may not be working. This is important in getting the details so that we can 
speak to facts rather than assume. But what is not in question is that we do not lack capacity. The technical capacity is there in terms of so graduates. How, so how do you know that we have technical capacity? Because that's what, that's what I'm explaining to you. Technical capacity is human resource. And we have the human resource. We have graduates. We have people with experience. That is technical capacity. So, so I mean, I mean that, is, that is not in doubt. Anybody knows that we have graduates and we have people with experience. So I mean, that, that's not in doubt. If we want to go by that postulation, you, I'm sure that you know what's going on in the banking sector. Right. Where right now, I mean, prior to this time, it feels like right now we're experiencing, uh, we're experiencing all of the happenings in the banking sector at a certain level. It's like uh, the crescendo. That's exactly what's going on with, in terms of services. Right. But uh, there will still be argument that we have graduates around. We have IT professionals and what have you. So what exactly could be responsible for that? You see, earlier I spoke to something. I said fallacy of hasty generalization. There are many factors that can be responsible for something. The fact that we have not found the solution of what is responsible does not mean that we will hang the, the, the fault on something. IT is a science. If they have the capacity, they have the capacity. But now speaking to the, I mean, speaking to the banking sector, there are a number of reasons. There is infrastructural limitations. There is cultural limitations because what people are, what the what the CBN and the banks are trying to introduce is actually a change in lifestyle. It's a change in culture. And if the people and that's who why are supposed people have to use to... this life. So, so I understand yeah, where you're coming from, but you know, I don't think that, you know, the point that we are as a country, I think that it's very important that we're very honest with ourselves and, you know, be uh, objective in what we do, uh, speaking truth to power and try not to be, I don't really know how to put it down for the want of words and just to be on, on check. But I think that we should not be acting. I, I know that Nigeria as a country, we're developing. We probably might not be the best. So... It's not like people wake up and say that we just wake up and assume that it's because the refineries are not working because of corruption. There is corruption. These are proven facts. We probably may not have time to go through all of the corruption that's going on in the system. We also probably, you have also stated that we have the capacity to produce. I mean, if you have the refineries, prior to this time, we have been producing. This is not the first time. We're not a country that just existed in 2020 or 2021 or 2022. All exploration, exploitation has been going on for a very long time. For, I mean, as long as some, I was in existence, 1950 something, we have been talking about exploring oil and what have you up until this moment. We, we still do not have, we can't categorically boast that we have what it takes to even refine what we can consume. Now we're here, we don't have petrol, it's scarce. Uh, for whatever reason, there's no concrete explanation from the ministry, which has been dedicated to cater to this. And then would it be fair on our part to come and say, it feels like we, we don't know what the problem is. That's what we're saying. We haven't been able, we don't have access to it and we can't speak to it. No, we know what the problems are. We know what it is. And I, I don't think that it's fair on us to just, uh, you know, sit back and continue to say we don't know what it is. Uh, we have to find um, the way. So we constantly, I, I really don't think that's fair. Look at what we're exactly okay. going through now. Now, including the umpire, the saddled with the responsibility of conducting an elections, they are already complaining that the, the scarcity of petroleum products, which we depend on highly to power houses, power businesses, because the energy sector has failed, uh, we don't have it, and so there might just be a case that that would affect the elections. And elections that uh, an umpire should have, we had four years as a country to plan for. So we're going to be complaining of no petrol, that that's going to be a problem. And yet we still say that we don't know what is wrong. So I, I really don't think that that's fair on our part. But we have to go now. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. Olubade show me. Uh, uh, we've been prompted Olabode. that we have the next guest to join us. Uh, we have to go. I hope that we have this conversation some other time. No problem. All My right. name is Olabode Show. Thank you. Well, that's the size of a conversation on this segment. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be right back to discuss further. And at this particular time, we'll be looking at health concerns. Please stay with us. <laughs> 